Hello there, RN. In this video, you are going to master gastrointestinal medications. So without further ado, let's do this. Nurses, remember, gastrointestinal medications, guys, are divided into three types. We have the antiemetics, which is in the yellow corner, the laxatives, which is on the orange corner, and the anti diarrheals guys, in the green corner, okay? Let's discuss these one by one. For antiemetics, guys, as we all know, they relieve nausea and vomiting, okay? So an example of antiemetic drugs are ondansetron, promethazine, we have metoclopramide, and diphenhydramine, or scopolamine as well, okay? Now, let's go with laxatives, guys. Laxatives, guys, are good for patients with constipation. Why? Because it promotes peristalsis or bowel movement. An example of these drugs, guys, we have psyllium, senna, bisacodyl, lactulose, polyethylene glycol, and docosate. And lastly, in the green corner, we have antidiarrheals. From the name itself, it's given for patients with diarrhea because it slows down intestinal movement or motility. An example of antidiarrheals, we have loperamide, diphenoxylate, and we have bismuth subsalicylate. Okay? First, let's discuss antiemetics. Antiemetics nurses, as we all know, it relieves nausea and vomiting. And there are three types of antiemetics. So we have serotonin antagonists, we have drugs, and we also have antihistamines and anticholinergics. So we will go through all of this. The first type is the serotonin antagonists. An example of serotonin antagonist nurses are andansentron. You have to remember, guys, the mode of action of andansentron or the serotonin antagonists it, it blocks serotonin to relieve nausea, okay? And as a nurse, you have to rem remember, guys, that the most common adverse effect of ondansetron or serotonin antagonists in general is we have, we call, torsades de point because it's French, guys. And if you're asked in the NCLEX or PNLE what is torsades de point or torsa de point, it's a type of cardiac dysrhythmia, so it can cause abnormal rhythm of the heart. And the most important question, guys, is how do you know that it's torsa de pont? The answer, you have to look for prolonged QT interval in the ECG or electrocardiogram, okay? That is the answer. It's prolonged QT interval. That's how you know it's torsa de pont. Also, you have to remember, nurses, when we give Ordansentron, we have to give it 30 minutes before chemotherapy. Because as we all know, chemotherapy drugs, guys, can cause nausea and vomiting. So we have to prevent that from happening. We're done with serotonin antagonists. Let's proceed with prokinetics. So an example of a prokinetic, guys, is we have metoclopramide. The mode of action of this drug is to increase GI motility, movement, and we have to monitor, guys, for EPS or extra pyramidal symptoms due to dopamine blockade, okay? So extra pyramidal symptoms, guys, are in a form of rigidity and tremors, okay? So these are very common, guys, for Parkinson's disease as well. Long-term use, guys, of prokinetics, especially metroclopramide, it can cause tardive dyskinesia. And if you're being asked in your exam, what is tardive dyskinesia, guys? Just look for repetitive movements, such as lip smacking and tongue protrusion, okay? So tardive dyskinesia, guys, is repetitive movements. Also, guys, you have to remember this. When giving metoclopamide or prokinetics in general, we have to stop giving it or we have to avoid giving it in patients with bowel obstruction because it can cause perforation, or in Tagalog, butas. It can cause holes in your intestines, okay? So you have to be careful with that. 
And the third type, guys, is we have antihistamines and anticholinergics. From the name itself, guys, it blocks histamine and acetylcholine receptors. Example of these drugs, guys, is we have diphenhydramine, scopolamine, and hydrocysine. As we all know, guys, antihistamines, they are known as drugs that can cause sedation or drowsiness. So we have to teach our patients to avoid driving and the use of machineries. Also, remember guys, for drugs like hydroxycin, we have we should never give them intramuscular or subcutaneous. Why? Because it can cause severe tissue damage. You have to remember that, guys. And now we're done with antiemetics. Let's proceed guys to antidiarrheas. So we have two types here. We have opioid antidiarrheas and then we have bismuth subsalicylate. Let's discuss them one by one, right? Opioid antidiarrheas, guys, they can cause drowsiness, no? Just like the drug. What are examples of opioids, guys? We have the anti-pain drug. What is it called again? I forgot. So an example, guys, of opioid antidiarrheas is we have loperamide and diphenoxylate. It can cause drowsiness, so we must avoid alcohol to avoid CNS depression, which is very deadly, okay? Next, for bismuth subsalicylate, guys, example of these drugs, we have Pepto-Bismol, Pepticalm, and Bisbaster. The mode of action of bismuth subsalicylate is to decrease intestinal secretions, just like antacids, okay? And also, bismuth subsalicylate, guys, have antimicrobial properties. So we have to watch out as nurses, we have to watch out guys for black tarry stools or melena and avoid using it for children with viral infections because guys, it can cause Reyes syndrome. So what is Reyes syndrome you might ask? It's the swelling of the brain and the liver guys. Reyes syndrome can cause increased ammonia in the body leading to swelling of the liver and the brain, which can lead to seizures. Okay? You have to remember that. Lastly, we have laxatives. We have three types again, guys. We have the bulk-forming laxatives, osmotic laxatives, and the stimulant laxatives. So for bulk-forming, example of these drugs are psyllium and docosate. Its mode of action is to stimulate peristalsis or bowel movement. And nurses, you have to remember, guys, that bulk-forming laxatives, guys, you have to give the patients more water or juice. Why? Because, guys, if the drug is blocked in the esophagus, it can cause perforation. That's why we give water so that it would flush out the drug because it can cause perforation in the bowel and esophagus. So that is very dangerous, okay? We give 240 ml or 8 ounce of water. Or alternatively, we can provide juice. As long as you flush out the drug and it doesn't stock in the esophagus or in the bowel because it can cause perforation. Next, we have the osmotic guys. Example is lactulose and polyethylene glycol. Again, its function is to stimulate peristalsis or bowel movement just like bulk forming. And we have to remember, guys, to monitor for dehydration or electrolyte imbalance. We also should also monitor, guys, for abdominal distension for this drug. And also, we must check for ammonia levels. In Just a simple correction, guys. Lactulose actually decreases ammonia levels in the body. That is why we recommend using lactulose for patients with liver diseases to lower ammonia levels in the body. And high levels of ammonia can cause seizures. And lastly, guys, we have the stimulant laxatives. Example is Senna and Bisacodil. Its mode of action, or says, is it draws water into the colon to soften the stool. You have to remember, guys, that stimulant laxatives are very addictive, can be very addictive. So it can cause drug dependence. So. It should not be used for long-term. And you have to remember, guys, long-term use of stimulant laxatives like bisacodyl and sana can cause hypokalemia. So it's very dangerous. To add, guys, 
for example, like eating fiber-rich Nothing foods, beats a moving your body remedy. or exercising regularly and increasing your fluid intake. The natural form is still the best, okay? So if you're asked what are fiber-rich foods, we have flax seeds, almonds, avocados, fruits like raspberries, oranges, bananas, apples, wheat bread, and green peas. So these are high-fiber diet which you can provide for your patients to induce bowel movement and that's it Francis. i hope you learned something new today keep repeating this video until you master all of them and please comment below if you want more